Hello, I am Alejandro Corpeño, and I will be your instructor in this How to Become a Heroku Rails Ninja. Ruby on Rails has become the most popular web application development framework out there. Many startups uh, choose Ruby on Rails as their main development platform, and hosting an application uh, has become increasingly more complex. You have a lot of cloud uh, providers like Amazon, Rackspace, and usually you have to go and configure these servers from scratch, then configure deployment procedures, automation. So that's a lot of complexity. Uh, right now, there is a big hype and trend about learning how to code. And a lot of tech founders that are not specifically trained in programming are building their own prototypes. So it's pretty cool when you learn how to code and you can build your first prototype, but then how do you deploy it? How do you put it on the cloud? Are you learning how to deploy? Maybe these classes don't teach you that and they just show you how to develop on your local computer, but when you go and you wanna put it on the web, you start finding that you need to know about Linux, uh, how to configure your web server, how to set up database servers, how to automate, how to put a mail server, how to create all the process to put your code on Git, pushing that to the deployment, uh, then have some scheduled tasks running on your server, how to virtualize the server, create copies so you can scale on demand, and a lot of knowledge that you end up needing to become a sysadmin. Or the most common route is to hire one. When you hire a sysadmin, then you're uh, bringing a full-time employee into your company and you uh, have to prepare to pay that person a competitive salary and then it becomes a cost for you. You have your hosting cost, and then you have this uh, human resource cost. Uh, either it could be a consultant that's gonna charge you by the hour, it could be a full-time employee that you have to bring into your company and find funding to, to support. So it becomes a problem if all you want is just to develop a quick prototype and put it on the web. So that's where Heroku comes in. What is Heroku? Heroku is a cloud computing platform as a service provider. A lot of jargon there, but you know, cloud computing is a trend right now. And platform as a service is a new uh, type of providers that instead of just giving you the, um, the infrastructure, they provide you with the complete platform. With platform, we mean all of the tools you need to deploy your code into the cloud. So you don't have to go and provision virtualize servers and configure the web server, database server, and application server, all of that is ready for you just to push your code, deploy it to the cloud. So that's what they give you. If you go to their website at heroku.com, you see that they are a cloud computing design and built for developers. Their premise is pretty simple. They don't want you to spend any time building infrastructure. They want to handle that for you and then you just focus on developing your app. The deployment, once you are signed up to their service, is pretty fast. You can do it in a few minutes. Basically, you can, from your command line on your local computer, you can create an application that provisions a Git repository that later you can just do push to it. So you can do a git push Heroku master with that you're sending your code to them and that automatically makes a deployment. So all of your new code is available now on a, on a web address that you can share with your coworkers, with your beta testers, with your investors. So that's as simple as that. And once you are deployed, you need to scale. Let's say your application is up and it's cached by some of the popular blogs. And then all of a sudden, instead of having five or 10 visitors, you start getting 5,000 or 10,000 or a million visitors. So then how do you scale? Under a traditional hosting environment, you would need to go and provision more servers, put a load balancer in place, separate the database from the web and, and do a lot of work. On Heroku, you can just provision more computing units, they call those dynos. So you create 
uh, immediately in, in seconds, you can scale from having two dinos to having 100 dinos. You can uh, increase the size of your database in minutes and just migrate everything to the new database, have replication, have backups, everything pretty simple. So that's the benefit of being in a platform as a service where once you're in, you can scale up and down on demand pretty easily and you get billed only for the resources you use. Who is the course for? Well, I am a developer. I am not a sysadmin and I am also an entrepreneur. I have been building a lot of my own ideas with Ruby on Rails and when it comes to deploying, that's where I hit a roadblock. I don't know how to do that. And usually I just contacted a friend who knew how to do that. Sometimes they do it as a favor. Sometimes I have to pay them. And if, if I need some maintenance on that, then I have to pay them again. They have to configure more things for me. So it's initially for the non-technical startup founder. Maybe you are not a technical person. You're not even building your own application, but you want to understand what goes on when you deploy. If you're a non-technical founder that is learning how to code right now, you probably already have a prototype running on your computer. You wanna share that to the world. So how do you deploy that? Well, take this course, you will learn how to deploy it to Heroku pretty fast. Also, it's for technical founders. If you're the Ruby on Rails developer of your company and you are pretty good developing your application but you don't know how to deploy it, then this is for you. You can learn how to deploy it on the pretty basic level but also how to optimize your application, how to implement caching on your application, how to implement um, techniques that will take advantage of Heroku as a platform to make your application more responsive and ready for scale. It is also for sysadmins and DevOps professionals. Uh, you would say, why do they need this course? I mean, they know how to do this. Well, I have shown Heroku to some of my friends that are actually professionals at this, and they really like the fact that it gives you um, a good framework of how to organize your own infrastructure. So if you have a lot of servers you manage, you are always putting some automation. You use things like Puppet, Chef, and other things. But your relationship with your developers has to be something like what Heroku has built, where they just give you an API, they give you a command line tool, and you can just communicate with whatever scripts you have on the other side, making your developer's life easier. So if you're a sysadmin uh, or a DevOps professional, you would also benefit from taking this course and uh, looking at what Heroku provides to us, the developers, and then understand what kind of things you can do on your own infrastructure, what kind of scripts can you prepare and give access to your development team. And finally, it is also for any existing Heroku client. Heroku right now is uh, hosting, I think, millions of applications. A lot of people are already paying them to host their production level applications, but sometimes you waste money by not understanding how Heroku works. I have had clients that tell me like, you know, my application is running slow, so I'll move from having five dynos to having 20 dynos. And the problem is not dynos sometimes. The problem is that your application is not optimized. So by understanding the platform, you can change your application to make it more optimal. So if you are an existing Heroku client and you think you're spending too much money, just take this course, you will understand it better, and then you can apply any tweaks to your existing configurations to save money. What will you learn in this course? Well, this course covers from the very basic development, the things you can see on the documentation from Heroku, pretty basic, where you can just start your application, do your first git commit and git push, and that deploys, so that's pretty basic. But then we move also to the add-ons. You can configure many add-ons to start using uh, things like memcache, and then you can also tweak the configurations. Heroku, when you deploy an application, gives you a very basic configuration that's most of the time just aimed to developers when you're developing your application, but not for production. So you can go through their documentation and learn what kind of things you can 
tweak, you can go through uh, thousands of blogs, Stack Overflow, and places where other people have found ways to tweak it. So we're going to cover some of these advanced configurations for different add-ons and for the basic configurations of Ruby on Rails. Then we'll cover also all of the optimizations for scaling. When you scale an application and you are moving from having just hundreds of requests per minute to having thousands, you have to change things in your application. Uh, I went through this process about a year ago with some of my clients of changing their applications from an environment that didn't scale in the same application of Rails hosted on Heroku to putting it in a way where it scales to a lot of traffic on demand. And it's all about just optimizing your application and having the right configurations on Heroku and the right add-ons. And most importantly, having access to the visibility tools that allow you to see where the bottlenecks are and what to do to scale those up. And finally, some optimizations that are only aimed to saving money. What I was mentioning before, sometimes people just want to increase the capacity of their processing by increasing the dynos, but sometimes that's not the, the answer. The answer is tweaking something in your code, putting some concurrency on your dynos using things like Unicorn. So a lot of things that we're going to be covering are going to help you really just saving money and you can reduce your Heroku bill substantially just by knowing the tool. The methodology is what I think is best to learning. Just going through the real deal, going through my web browser, showing you how to sign up to Heroku, showing you the documentation they already provide on how to get started, downloading the right tools for your platform, setting it up, and then we, we will start a new Ruby on Rails application from scratch. We will start uh, deploying it to Heroku, doing our first deployment, setting our application with the right Ruby gems that we need. Then uh, we're going to start also increasing the kind of things the application can do. Initially, we will just use a basic uh, Ruby on Rails scaffold to give it some basic functionality. But then we can start moving into adding more functionality that the scaffold doesn't provide then adding some design to it. When you add design, you add some assets, graphic assets like PNG files, CSS files, and then we can have some topics about how do you optimize serving those assets? How do you also change your database from SQLite on your dev environment to Postgres? That's what Heroku uses. How do you run migrations on Heroku on your database? So all of these topics we're gonna cover by doing it, just by going through our application and implementing these changes. Then we're gonna have access also to a lot of visibility tools. How do you check the logs? How do you see response times on your application? And the idea is to show you exactly how I work when I build an application. Uh, the methodology that we use when we develop now that we have things like Heroku is that you do constant deployments. You want to test that things work on your dev environment and then they work on your production environment. And you can have staging server in Heroku also. So you can have a staging environment and a production environment and you can start testing things up in the cloud as you develop them. That way you avoid getting surprises when things work on your dev, but they don't work on production. Well, now that's something in the past. You can test it, you can make sure it works everywhere. What kind of tools are we gonna use in this course? Well, you have to have your computer. It could be a Mac, Linux, or Windows. I use a Mac and all of the videos are gonna be recorded on that. You have to install Ruby on Rails on your computer. So if you don't have that yet, go ahead and install Ruby on Rails, you're going to need to install Ruby, you're going to need to install some database controller, but usually if you don't have a database, you can use SQLite and that's going to solve all of your needs for that. Uh, you're going to need also Git. Git is going to help you push and pull code from the repository. Uh, but if you don't have Git 
installed yet, uh, you're gonna get that when you install the Heroku tool belt. So if you don't have it, don't worry about it. And you're gonna have to communicate to Heroku and to Ruby on Rails um, through command line. So you need to have a terminal software. Usually all of these platforms have it. Mac has one, Linux has, and Windows has one. So just be comfortable using the command line tool. And you need a text editor. In my case, I use TextMate, but you can use Sublime Text or any other text editor that you are familiar with. The basic knowledge you need to take this course is, again, pretty basic. You, you just need to know how to code. I'm not gonna teach you how to code, so you need to know that, or at least you should be learning how to code. If you're taking a learn how to code class right now, then that's enough. You're, we're gonna be using pretty basic coding knowledge, nothing too complex. Some knowledge of Ruby on Rails. If you already know how to develop on Ruby on Rails, that's better. But if not, uh, I'm gonna be walking through the process of building the Rails applications. So you will see how it's done. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time explaining the basics, but you will see the process. I'm gonna walk you through so Rails is, a, any basic knowledge of Rails helps. Then HTML, CSS, and jQuery are also great to know. If you don't know them, then it's not a deal breaker, but uh, if you know it, it's, it's much better. Uh, some familiarity with working on command line. Again, uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of commands like uh, listing the files, um, pushing code, pulling code, changing directories from command line. So that's a knowledge that will help you a lot. I am going to be updating the content constantly. Right now, I want to open the course this February 15th with the first 20 sessions. Those are already up and those cover all of the basics from starting your Heroku account, starting an application, deploying it, and making a lot of tweaks to it uh, to deploy new features, set it up, the database, um, a lot of basic things. So get you up to speed on deploying your application and having a good looking application up on Heroku. So that's the first 20 sessions. And I'm working on the next round of sessions that cover optimizations and advanced settings for Heroku. Those are gonna be ready and up before March 15. I'm gonna be uploading probably two or more per week. Those are 16 more sessions that I'm gonna be uploading. In total, we're gonna have 36 sessions on this first round of the course. And in the future, that meaning the immediate future, once I finish with the optimization sessions, we're gonna be uploading also more and more sessions about specific topics on Heroku. Heroku is a evolving platform. They launch new features every week. Last week, I got an email uh, announcing a new type of dyno. They used to have just uh, the normal dynos that have 512 megabytes of memory. Then about a year ago, they launched the 2X dynos. Those have one gigabyte of memory. And recently, uh, last week, they launched the performance dynos. Those have six gigabytes of memory. So having new types of computing units or dynos gives you a lot of flexibility on how you want to handle your application concurrency and a lot of things. So that's basically the scope of this course. We have the first 20 sessions ready. We're gonna have 16 more sessions ready by March 15, and then you can continue to expect new updates, new videos covering advanced topics on how to understand Heroku and how to improve your application performance on Heroku. So. I invite you to take this course and become a Ruby on Rails ninja on Heroku.